The next topic we're going to cover will be the hardware architecture. So we will have a look in terms of each of the board contained inside. So generally, as I mentioned just now, for the MBTS, generally we divide it into BBU, RF, as well as antenna. So we will also discuss about how they get the power from the fan unit and the SLPU unit. Now, how does the BBU look like? So this is the hardware structure for the BBU. Generally, in our Huawei, we got two types of BBU, which is BBU3900 and BBU3910. So, of course, the BBU3910 is the better, the upgrade version. So, the appearance for both of the BBU is exactly the same. So, let us have a look here. For both of the BBU, generally, this one is the slot number. Notice that in one BBU, you can put in a maximum of 11 bots, and the bot number is already fixed. Starting from here, it's slot 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then at this side, it's slot number 16, 18, and 19, which is illustrated here. So each of the BBU got their own series number. All the series number is actually allocated at the side of the BBU here, which is the ESN number. And for each of the BBU, each of the slots, we will allocate a specific bot. Now, let us have a look what is the type of bot we can put it inside the BBU. Now, generally, inside our BBU, we can support either 2G or 3G or combination of both, which means that inside one BTS, you can support 2G only, 3G only or combination. So, notice that inside one BBU, slot number 16, which is this slot, it's always fan unit. So, which means that at slot number 16, it is mandatory for us to put the fan unit. Whereas at slot number 19 here, we put a bot that we know as a UPEU. So, what is the function of UPEU? Based on the name itself, UPEU stands for Universal Power and Environment Monitoring Unit. So, which means that where the BBU get the power, they get from DCDU. But the DCDU plug the power to which bot? They plug the power to this bot. UPEU. So which means that this bot, they receive the power and they send the power to the remaining of the bot inside the BBU. And then the slot number 16 and 19, it's mandatory for you to put the bot. On the other hand, number 18, this slot, it's uh, optional. Optional which means that you can leave it empty or you can put the bot inside. And the remaining here, and the center you can see here you generally can put in eight different type of bots so what type of bot that you can normally put it inside notice that at slot number five six and seven these three slots we mainly allocate for the management bot management bot which means that they are the manager inside the whole bbu so depending the version that you are using if you're using 2g you need a 2g managing bot if you're using 3g you need a 3g managing bot if you're using both you can use a mix mod of managing bot. So 5, 6 and 7 we allocate for the managing bot and the remaining part here, the remaining slot, you can actually put in the bot as allocated assigned here. And notice here, here is the typical configuration of the BBU. Normally we will put the fan at this position, UPEU at this position, number 18 is optional, 5, 6 and 7 manager bot, and then the remaining slot here, which is slot number 2 and 3, normally we will put a baseband bot. What is the function of a baseband bot? The baseband bot is the bot that connect the BBU to the RF. So this one is to show you in case you are using a mix mod, okay, GU. Notice that in this condition, GU, which means 2G and 3G together, you can put the manager bot, which is the UMPT bot at this position. Now, let us have a look at the managing bot, which normally we put it at slot number 5, 6 and 7. Now, in case, let's say your base station is using 2G. 2G, the managing bot we know as a GTMU bot. GTMU bot, you look at the size of the bot, it's slightly bigger, which means that this managing bot, actually they occupy two slots. They occupy slot 5 and slot 6 together. So there is no way for you to separate the bot because the bot is one big bot and you cannot cut it into half. Now, what happened is that for this bot, you notice that number 5 is the one that at upper position here, number 6 is at this position here. So what is the difference between slot 5 and 6 here if you notice? Number 5, normally 
it's the slot that we use to connect to the transmission equipment that connect directly to the BSC. Whereas the upper position here is the slot, the port that we use to connect to the RF. Notice that at slot number 6, which is the one that connected to the transmission equipment, you got a variety of port. So what is the function of this port? Let us have a look here. Starting from the first one, ETH. What is the function of this port? This port is used for local connection, local commissioning. Let's say, for example, if you want to bring your computer and connect directly to the managing board, you connect to this port, ETH port. How about the remaining? This one, FE0, FE1. The function of FE0 and FE1, these two port is used for connection to the transmission equipment. Let's say if you are using electrical port, you use FE0. If you are using optical to transmission equipment, you use FE1. And in case you are using E1-T1 cable, then you use this port. And the USB port here is for upgrade purpose. Let's say, for example, if you want to upgrade or during commissioning, so what happened, you can plug in the USB inside here. This one is the function of all the port at slot number 6. How about slot number 5? Slot number 5, you notice there is a total of 6 port here. So what is the function of all the port here? The function of the port at slot number 5 here is used to connect the BBU to the RF unit. And notice that we got two types of GTMU board, GTMU and GTMU-B. GTMU-B is the upgrade version. And when we use upgrade version, of course, they will have an extra function. What is the extra function of GTMU B board? This GTMU B board, they facilitate the interconnection, which you no need to have a cable, but you can connect directly to the UMPT board. So this one is to show you the indicator on the GTMU board. So let's say, for example, you see the run indicator blinking is green color. Green color, if keep on blinking, which means that the board is actually normal. Okay, the blinking, the board is actually normal. Let's say, for example, if you see the indicator run, it's steady on the green color. Generally means that they got power supply, but the board is 40. Okay, and then if you see the alarm indicator is on, which means they got alarm. And then the active indicator, if you see the green color on, which means that the board is active. This one, it's provided that you are using 2G. Let's say, for example, now I'm using 3G. So 2G, you got a manager board. Same goes to 3G. So 3G, you also got their own manager board. The name of the board we know as WMPT. So W generally stands for WCDMA, Main Processing and Transmission. So since this board is only processed the 3G, so let us have a look at the board here. The board here, it looks similar to the GTMU board, except that GTMU board occupied two slots, but the WMPT board, they occupied one slot only. And notice that this one slot, it's actually the transmission slot. Notice that the down position of all this port is actually used to connect to the transmission equipment. And where we put the WMPT board, normally the WMPT board, we will put it at slot number 7. Let's say slot number 7 is fully occupied, then you can put at slot number 6 and so on. And what is the function of all this port here? It is similar like GTMU board. The first one is ETH port, is used for local connection and local commissioning. And then you got FE0, FE1. These two port, the function is used to connect to the transmission equipment. In case you are using electrical port, you use FE0. In case you are using optical port, then it's FE1. And then if you are using E1T1, you use this port. And in case you want to upgrade or do a USB commissioning, you can plug it inside here. And notice that for the GTMU board and the WMPT board, the indicator is at this position. So if you see the run is green color blinking, which means it is normal. If you see the alarm is red color on, which means they got alarm inside. And then if you see the active, it's green color, which means this board is active. So this is the thing that I mentioned just now. Green color means it is normal and so on. And let's say, for example, if your machine is using both 2G and 3G, but you don't want to have two separate board, you want the manager board combined together become one board, then you can have this board, UMPT board. What is the function of UMPT board? Is the managing board for U stands for universal, which means this single board can support 2G and 3G management processing together. So notice here, 
maximum board number mandatory. It can work in active and standby, but normally we will let it work in active. Not many operators will use the standby. So what is the main function? As I mentioned just now, it's a managing board. And notice that the port here is exactly same like the WMPT board. And notice that for this UMPT board, they also occupy one slot only. Starting from this one, it's FEGE, and then this one is FEGE as well. Notice that for these two ports, one is for electrical, one is for optical. So in case your machine is connected directly to transmission equipment using electrical port, you use FEGE0. If it is optical, it's FEGE1. If it is E1T1, you're using this E1T1 port. And what is the function of this port? Notice that here we label as CI. So the function of this port is for inter-BBU connection. Let's say you want to connect two BBU together. This port is required for you to connect it. And notice that one port is missing here, which is the local commission port. Let's say I want to bring my computer connect directly to this UMPT, but there is no port for you to, for direct connection. So what happened is that here, USB, you need to plug in a USB adapter and then connect directly to your computer. So this one is the indicator that I have already taught just now. It's exactly the same like the WMPT, the GTMU. Now, after we discuss about the managing board, next part, let us have a look at the baseband processing board. Now, what is the function of a baseband processing board? Baseband processing board is used to connect the BBU to the RF unit. Let's say, for example, connect to the RFU, connect to the RRU. So inside one BBU, how many BBP board you can put it inside? You can put in a maximum of six BBU board inside. So we got a lot of baseband processing board. So the example illustrated here, WBBP, W generally stands for WCDMA, which is the 3G. So this type of board, it's to process the baseband that it's for 3G. So notice the main function here, process, uplink and downlink, baseband, signal. Now, how does the WBBP board look like? So let us have a look here. Now, this one is the WBBP board. Notice that WBBP board, we got a lot of version. We got A, B, D, and F. So each of the versions have different number of ports, as well as the capacity that they support is also slightly different. Notice that the WBBP A and B, they got three ports only, which means that this board can maximum connect it to three different RRU or RFU. But if you look at D and F, they got six ports inside there, which means that the WBBP D and F, they can connect to six different RFU or RRU at the same time. Generally, for one WBBP, they can actually support around six cells. So this one is to show you how does the WBBP board looks like, and then the indicator at this part, and the indicator at this position as well. So if you see the CPRI, this one is the CPRI. So all the light is actually at this position. Can you notice that you got transmit and receive light? So what happened is that if you see the green color is on, means that this port is working normally. If you see it is red color, means something is faulty. So here is actually showing you what is indicated by the light here. So this one is for WBBP board, which means support 3G only. Now, let's say, for example, I want my base point processing board support 2G and 3G together. So what board should I use? You got a UBBP board. So this one U stands for universal, which means that they can support 2G and 3G together. So the maximum board number you can put inside BBU, it's six. So this one is to show you the appearance for our UBBP board. So notice that the appearance for the UBBP board is actually similar like the WBBP board. The only difference is actually at the labeling part, this part. From the WBBP, they changed to UBBP. And then they got extra one more port here, which is the HEI port. So what is the function of this HEI port is actually for inter-BBP board connection. And notice that for the BBP board here, you got six CPRI port. So this is six CPRI port is connected to six different RF module. And then same like the WBBP bot, WBBP bot is actually support for 3G, but UBBP bot is actually support for multiple generation, which means 2G plus 3G plus 4G together also can. And notice that the capacity of the UBBP bot is actually illustrated here. So we got different type of UBBP bot starting from D1 to D6. And the capacity of the UBBP bot is actually depend on the number of TRX, 
number of CE, and then the number of the cell that they can process. Now, we got next board, which is the UTRP board. What is the function of UTRP board? UTRP board, we got another name we know as an extension board. Let's say, for example, inside my main manager board, main processing board, I need two optical ports. But inside my UMPT board only got one optical port. So I need an extension optical port. So if you need any extension port that belongs to the main processing, you can have this board, UTRP. UTRP is the extension board. So let's say, for example, if you need extension of E1T1 port, then you can go for the E1T1 UTRPA. UTRPA is the extension board for the E1T1 port. Let's say I need extra optical port. I'm not enough of optical port. I need extra optical port. So you look here, optical port, you can go for UTRP2, which means they provide two extra optical port. So in another word, UTRP board is an extension board. And how about this board, UBRI? UBRI board is in case, let's say you got 2G. Okay, 2G. So the GTMU board, they can support connect to six different RFU for 2G. Now let's say for example, if you got not enough of port connected to the RF, you can have UBRI board. UBRI board is the extension board connect to the RF unit. And we got another type of board we known as USCU board as well. What is the function of USCU board? This one is actually a clock board which support the GPS clock. Notice here, USCU board, it provides port for external clock. So majority of the operator nowadays, they're actually using the IP clock. Okay, so this USCU board is actually some optional board if you have already got the IP clock. And then the fan board is located at slot number 16. So this one is the fan board for cooling system. And the next board will be the UPEU board. So what is the function of this board? I have already mentioned just now. This board is located at position number 19. The function of this board is to provide the power to the BBU and they monitor the external alarm as well. Now, this one is the physical appearance of the UPEU board. So based on the name itself, this one is a universal power and environmental monitoring unit, which means that this board actually support the power supply and then connect to the external environmental alarm. So let us have a look here. This one is a UPEU board. You got a power supply at this position. This one is power on and power off. And then here you got four ports. So the upper two port here is the external alarm 0 and external alarm 1. So the external alarm here is actually connected to the sensor outside. So what happens is that one port can connect to four different sensors. So you got two port here, you can connect to eight different sensors. The sensor here I'm referring to, let's say for example, you got a door sensor, temperature sensor and so on. And after that here, you got another two port, which is MON0 and MON1. So MON0 is the monitoring port. So what is the function of this one is actually the port is connected to the monitoring devices. Example of monitoring devices, let's say for example, the environmental monitoring unit, the temperature control unit, the fan monitoring unit, and so on. So here is to show you the things that I have mentioned just now. The first two port is connected to the external alarm. One port can support four external alarm. So you got two port here, which means that they can support a total of eight external alarm. Another two port here is for internal alarm monitoring. Now, if let's say for example, inside my network, I got a total of 10 external alarm, but one UPEU board can only support eight external alarm. I need another two extra. So if you need another two extra, you can have this board, UEIU. UEIU is to provide extra port for your external alarm. Notice that the appearance for the UEIU board is exactly the same like the UPEU. The only difference is that the down portion here, the power supply portion here is missing. They only contain the upper portion which is the external alarm part. This one is the example of the monitoring subsystem that I have already explained to you just now. So example of the monitoring system, let's say for example, you got PMU, you got the environmental monitoring unit, you got fan monitoring unit. So all these monitoring devices is cascaded together and then finally it is connected to here which is the BBU. So which port they are connected to is connected to the MON0 and MON1. So let's say for example, some fan is actually damaged, what happened, they will send out the signal to your BBU and from there the BBU will trigger the alarm. Thanks for watching.